Hi, and welcome to this video series teaching you all about Bitcoin, what it is, how it works, and most importantly, how to make money from it. In part one, we're looking at Bitcoin basics explained for beginners. My name is Chris Dunn. I'm a professional trader and investor. And don't forget to click above me to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the future videos that I'm going to be putting out. So let's start by answering the question, what is Bitcoin? And Bitcoin is very simply a decentralized digital currency. In other words, it's kind of like virtual cash or gold. And it's transferred person to person, which means that there's no bank or government control or prerequisites to be able to own or transfer Bitcoin. And the symbol for Bitcoin looks like this B with little hashes through it or BTC, kind of like USD for US dollar. Now, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency and cryptocurrencies have been around since the 1980s. But there was a major problem called double spend. All of the prior digital currencies or cryptocurrencies have had the problem where if somebody spends a unit of that currency, it's been very difficult to tell if it's already been spent. And that's the biggest problem that Bitcoin has solved and why it has gained so much popularity. And the way that it does this is through its distributed peer-to-peer -peer network, which works kind of like BitTorrents. And the first Bitcoin was actually issued in 2009 by someone apparently named Satoshi Nakamoto. And this is believed to be a pen name and nobody really knows who started Bitcoin. So there will actually only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in circulation. And in 2009, we had the first Bitcoins that were released and there is a predetermined amount of Bitcoins that are released every 10 minutes. And we'll talk about how that works in a later video, but just know that over the years, this will continue to happen until the year 2140. And Bitcoin is divisible down to the eighth decimal place. So kind of like the, the US dollar is divisible to the penny or two decimal places, you can almost infinitely break down Bitcoin to a very, very, very small amount. And the Bitcoin protocol or the Bitcoin network, the way that Bitcoin operates, since there's no central location that's governed by any specific country, it's very difficult and expensive to hack. And there's some numbers that say, to even hack the Bitcoin network for 10 minutes would cost around half a billion dollars. And so there's a lot of trust and a lot of vetting of the protocol and the network that has happened over the past few years. And it's basically controlled by the consensus of market participants. So again, no one government, no one person or no one group actually controls the Bitcoin network, which is why it's gaining so much popularity. So why is Bitcoin so important? And there's some aspects of cryptocurrencies that I think show huge prospects for really changing the world. Let's look at this first fact that out of the seven plus billion people that live on the planet, about six and a half billion people don't have access to basic financial and banking services like checking accounts or credit cards. And in the US alone, it's estimated that about 18% of people don't have access to these basic financial services. And it makes it very easy. Bitcoin makes it very easy for anybody without government permission or control to have access to virtual banking. And I think that's really going to change the world. The second fact that we'll look at here is since the 2008 financial crisis, fiat currencies like the US dollar, and if you're not familiar with, with what fiat currencies are, it's a currency like the US dollar that's backed by nothing but the trust that people have in the government. You know, back in the 70s, we were on the gold standard and Nixon took us off of the gold standard. So now the US dollar is not really tied to anything. And I've always kept this 100 trillion Zimbabwe dollar as kind of a reminder of what can happen when governments get out of control by printing too much money. You know, in the span of less than two years, the Zimbabwe government essentially devalued their currency to nothing. And there's a lot of people that are speculating that some of the major world's fiat currencies are going in that same direction. And it's kind of scary because right now the US dollar is the world's uh, reserve currency and we're just printing it 
like nobody's business. And so the way that Bitcoin handles this problem is that there is a predetermined set amount of Bitcoins that are going to be released over the years. And what that does is it's inherently designed to be deflationary and really control inflation. And the third uh, kind of major problem that Bitcoin really handles is the fact that cross currency purchases and transfers across borders, you know, cross country borders are expensive and have a lot of friction, a lot of government red tape. And if you want to move millions of dollars, that costs a lot of money where with Bitcoin, it's very, very inexpensive. And there's stories of people moving millions and millions of dollars for just a few pennies. So before we look at how Bitcoin actually has value, let's talk about what is money. And money is very simply any means for exchanging goods and services. And in recent history, we've used fiat currencies like the US dollar and gold as widely accepted forms of money. And there are primarily four properties that define what money is. Number one is it needs to be divisible. It needs to be able to broken, be broken down into different parts or different sizes. Kind of like the dollar can be broken down into two decimal places, you know, a penny or 10 cents or a dollar or up from there. Gold can also be broken down. You know, you can have a bar or an ounce. There's different ways to break it down. The second is it needs to be durable. You know, it needs to be able to stand the test of time. So if you have a bar of gold, if I put a bar of gold here on my desk, Odds are it's not going to just evaporate into thin air. And even this $100 trillion Zimbabwe dollar isn't likely to just evaporate into thin air. Number three is it needs to be fungible, um, basically like a commodity. So one U.S. dollar is equal to the value of another U.S. dollar. They're interchangeable, kind of like on the futures markets where people trade, you know, uh, oranges or coffee or pig bellies or oil and gold, each unit is equal to another unit. They're all created equal in their value. And then the fourth is it needs to be verifiable. You need a way to verify that it's real and not counterfeit. So Bitcoin does a very good job of answering those four properties of money. And let's look at some other ways that there's actually value derived from Bitcoin. Number one is it is limited and scarce like gold. On planet Earth, there's only a set amount of gold, just like there is a limited amount of Bitcoins. There will only be 21 Bitcoins that are ever mined, just like you can only mine a certain amount of gold. The second is it's decentralized. So we've mentioned this. There's no central government, which means it's a peer-to-peer -peer network like torrents, and it can be anonymous. Now, there are some uh, areas for improvement when it comes to the anonymous nature of cryptocurrencies, but for the most part, it is anonymous. Um, it is also transparent, meaning the code and the, the structure, how the Bitcoin cryptocurrency network and protocol is built is transparent. Anybody can go and evaluate and look at the code, how this is built. And because it's been vetted by people way smarter than me for over five years, it's trusted. People place their trust in the Bitcoin protocol even more so than they're putting their trust in their own government, which is very interesting and why I think the whole cryptocurrency movement could really change the way that world leaders and governments and people look at money. It's also very easy to buy and sell. We'll talk about how Bitcoin works and how it's so easy just to move Bitcoins between two people. Um, there's extremely, extremely low transaction fees and it's irreversible. So merchants love it. There are no chargebacks and none of the problems that you have when it comes to taking credit cards. So it's important to keep in mind that Bitcoin is not backed by anything tangible. Just like fiat currencies, it's not on the gold standard. It's not backed by anything except for the trust that people have in the Bitcoin system. Um, and the real value is determined by what people are willing to pay for it, which is why we've seen the price of Bitcoin go up so much over the past couple of years because the demand has increased. And people place value in these four aspects of Bitcoin. Number one, as we've talked about, the lack of government control and manipulation. You know, no um, person who is elected into office can step in and contri contribute to hyperinflation. Okay, so protected from inflation. Um, they have trust in the Bitcoin protocol where it would cost over a half a billion dollars just to fool the system for about 10 minutes and the anonymous nature of how Bitcoin works. So how does Bitcoin actually work? It's very simple. You know, 
let's say you take some money, somebody gives you cash or somebody writes you a check and you take that money to a bank and you deposit it into your bank account. Well, Bitcoin kind of works like this, where if somebody gives you Bitcoins, they are stored in a public ledger and everybody has access to this ledger from the very beginning in 2009. Every transaction is actually recorded in this ledger and um, sending and receiving Bitcoins is as easy as sending an email. It really is. And I'll show you how this works in a second. And so your coins are actually stored in wallets and you have a few different kind of wallets. You can store your local hard drive wallet. So where your coins actually live on your computer. Um, number two, you can have paper wallets where you physically write down the codes that are associated um, to your Bitcoin and keep it off of the network. And number three, hosted online. So there are companies that are actually providing hosted wallets where you can access your coins from anywhere in the world. And that's where the security risk comes in. And in a later video, we're going to dive more into wallets and specifically how to buy and sell Bitcoins. So with Bitcoins, there's actually two parts um, to your Bitcoin account. Number one is your public key. So this is kind of like your account number or your email address. That's kind of how it works. And your Bitcoin key is actually made up of 27 to 34 alphanumeric characters. So um, it would look something like this or somewhere around 30 characters. So this is an, an account number that you can actually give out to anybody who wants to send you Bitcoin. So say I wanted to send you five Bitcoins, you would give me your public key. I would type that in and then shoot you over the Bitcoins. Now where the protection comes in is your private key, which is kind of like your password for whenever you do online banking, you need to know your password to log into your online bank, right? Well, it's kind of similar with the private key, which is the password you need to access your Bitcoins in the account or in that public ledger. So it sounds complicated, but it really is pretty simple. So how do you get Bitcoins? There's really three ways to acquire Bitcoins. Number one, you can buy Bitcoins from a person. So you can come to me and say, Chris, I want to buy Bitcoin and we'll look at the price of Bitcoin and you give me dollars and I give you a Bitcoin. That simple. Or you can go to an exchange. There are websites like Mt. Gox, Coinbase, Bitstamp that you can go to and this is where people meet to buy and sell Bitcoins from each other, kind of like the stock market. The second is you can barter. You can basically provide products or services in exchange for Bitcoins. And then the third is you can mine for Bitcoins. Okay. And this is where, uh, if you recall a minute ago, I mentioned that Bitcoins are released every 10 minutes or so. There are miners out there who actually mine for these Bitcoins and it works kind of like a lottery system where the more CPU power that you have and the more that you mine, the better your odds are of getting these Bitcoins for free. And the way that you do that is by running software on your computer. And in some later videos, I'll show you actually how to do this. So how can you profit with Bitcoin? Number one is if you mine, obviously you're getting these Bitcoins for free and then you can sell them for whatever the market value is. Now, one thing I'll say is this is becoming in increasingly more difficult. The more competition there is, the more computing power it takes to actually mine for these Bitcoins and the more cost is associated, the more hardware you have to buy and really the more electricity you have to pay for. And so before you say, look, I just want to start mining for free Bitcoins, you really have to do a cost analysis to figure out if it's going to be profitable or not. Okay. And the second way, which is my favorite way is to invest or trade in Bitcoins. And you've probably heard a lot around, you know, is Bitcoin a bubble? There's a lot of speculation and prices have increased dramatically over the past couple of years. And so we'll talk about your options here, but I think the whole buy and hold mentality is very risky. Anytime that you say, look, you know, I, honey, tonight I heard uh, on 60 minutes that Bitcoin, uh, you know, it's the new thing. It's going to take over the dollar. Let's just go ahead and buy some Bitcoins at whatever the market price is right now. Um, that's a very, very risky strategy as we'll talk about here in a second. My favorite approach to this is short-term trading. That's what I do. For over a decade now, I've been a professional trader in the stock and the futures markets, and I see a lot of opportunity um, to actually make money trading Bitcoins. And over the past few weeks, I've actually made some very, very nice calls and profitable trades in the Bitcoin space. 
Now, the third option that you have is if you're a merchant, if you sell um, products or provide services, what a lot of people are doing is they're offering discounts to people who want to pay for products or services in Bitcoin. So if you're somebody who sells um, cups and you say, okay, the value of a cup is $1. Well, I know that if I expect the price of Bitcoin to go up over the next few years because of the limited supply, then I can actually take a discount. So you can either buy this cup for me for $1 or you can give me 50 cents worth in Bitcoin. So I'll accept that as a discount. That's what a lot of people are doing. And recently people have been purchasing homes with Bitcoin. They've been purchasing Ferraris and Lamborghinis with Bitcoin. And, um, recently a lot of big merchants online have also started to accept Bitcoin. So this is a really exciting time in history to be a part of this cryptocurrency movement. So let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin speculation. Recently, Bitcoin has increased in value over 10,000% over the past couple of years. And through the rise in price, we've also seen many crashes in price of over 50%. But something to keep in mind, as of the time of, that I'm recording this video, prices were covered after each crash. So there's a lot of people that are speculating and saying, oh, Bitcoin's a big bubble, you know, don't chase it, which I agree with. And as a professional trader, I am a huge proponent of not chasing what the herd is doing. You know, we saw this in the housing bubble of the early 2000s. And even a couple of years ago in 2011, um, we saw that with the gold bubble, you know, people flock to an asset or an investment vehicle that drives prices up kind of like tulip mania, right? Some of you probably have heard about that, but the idea is to just understand if you're investing in something that is going to have long-term value. And there's a big question that I think will determine if Bitcoin is actually just a bubble or a fad, which I don't think it is. But the, the big question here is, will Bitcoin become widely accepted as a form of payment and a store of value? In other words, will the mass majority of people in the world use Bitcoin as a means of exchange over other currencies, fiat currencies like the dollar, and will they see value in it? Will they use it as a store of value, kind of like they look at gold? If that remains true in the near future, I think the prices of Bitcoin will stay very, very valuable. Now, let's go ahead and look at some recent bubbles in the price of Bitcoin. Here in June of 2011, this was kind of the first little bubble that we saw where Bitcoin's prices went from about 50 cents to $32 in about 60 days. And then over the course of a few months, crashed back to $2. So this is kind of where the first, you know, excitement of Bitcoin came in. A lot of the early adopters who had Bitcoins for free or at very, very low prices were able to cash out around $32. And then you can see it eventually faded back to two. And then in April of 2013, we saw another big bubble where we went from about $35 up to $266. And then in the span of a few days, crashed back to 50 and then that even recovered to the bubble of November 2013, where price went from $100 up to $1,200 and then has since crashed below $400. So it's important to keep in mind that bubbles are relative, meaning if we look at these past two bubbles, the first one from 2011 and then early 2013, you notice that in hindsight, after this big spike, these little bubbles just seems like little blips on the map, right? And so the question is, over the next few years, will the $1,200 price be the all-time high? And will this crash and then eventually fade out? Or will there be many more consecutive bubbles over the next few months and years? That's just something that nobody knows. And so I want to just give you a little bit of advice when it comes to speculation, because this is what I do. Number one, don't chase emotional buying. This is why so many people lose money in virtually every market, be it the stock market, the futures market, the housing market, now the Bitcoin market. It's when people chase emotional rises in price. 
Making money in the markets is all about anticipation and understanding mass human psychology. And I always like to do the opposite of the herd. When everybody's panicking, I like to look for opportunities to buy, right? When everybody is having bullish exuberance where they're really happy and it's driving the price of a market up, I get skeptical and I look for reasons to sell. And there's an old cliche quote by Warren Buffett that, sa that says, when people are scared, be greedy. And when people are greedy, be scared. And I think that applies to every market and especially in Bitcoin. Another thing is you want to consider the risks of Bitcoin's and your goals because Bitcoin is just an experiment. You know, this is really the first successful cryptocurrencies. And right now, there's over a hundred what we call altcoins or alternative cryptocurrencies. And so we don't know if in the long term, if Bitcoin is going to be kind of emerge or evolve to be the sole and most trusted currency. So you, you have to keep that in mind. And also I wouldn't recommend trading with Bitcoin, you know, or investing in Bitcoin with money you can't afford to lose because there are some significant risks with Bitcoin that we'll talk about here in a second. And the last question that I kind of want to propose here is, is day trading or is short-term trading really riskier than the buy and hope mentality? My thesis is, and this is what I do every day, I come into the markets and I say, I want to have predefined trades that I'm looking for that I think have a high probability of success, that I can control my risk and really predetermine where my profit targets are and where my risk, where I would stop out or take a loss. I think approaching the markets from a very mechanical and mathematical approach is a better way to control risk than say, honey, I just want to buy in the stock market. Or I just want to buy Bitcoin and hope it goes up for a few years. You know, if you lived through the financial crisis of 2008, you probably experienced that pain. I know a lot of people that were very, very bullish on the markets in 2007. And you had idiots like Kramer on CNBC telling people the market's going great. Everybody needs to buy at these all time highs. And then a few months later, the markets were down and people saw their retirement accounts fall by 50%. And then they sold at the bottom. They panicked. They thought, you know, the American economy was going to shit. So they sold out and then they missed the four year bull market that happened after that. And so it's just my job here as kind of a trading educator to help people break away from the herd mentality and to see things for what they really are. So let's talk about some of the risks of Bitcoin. I think probably the biggest risk, a lot of people think that actually um, governments or political intervention is the biggest risk. I think an even bigger risk is bugs in the code or problems with the Bitcoin protocol that lead to a complete lack of confidence in Bitcoin. Something that could happen, you know, if Bitcoin ever got hacked or if people ever said, look, we can't trust the Bitcoin protocol, you could have a flight from that currency and see it crash to almost zero. I think that's a very real risk, but I think the probabilities of that happening are very, very low. That's why I'm overall bullish in Bitcoin. And I actually believe that Bitcoin or at least um, cryptocurrencies is going to change the world. Um, and then the third is competing cryptocurrencies. Again, there's over a hundred alternative coins right now. If one of those coins create solves a problem uh, a big enough problem that Bitcoin doesn't right now, then everybody could transfer into that coin. Um, so that's yet to be seen and be very skeptical skeptical of anybody who says that they know what's going to happen with Bitcoin. Um, anybody who owns a lot of Bitcoin is probably really bullish on Bitcoin and wants to see it succeed. Anybody who's a hater or feels like they were late to the game or doesn't quite understand it, they might be naysayers without truly understanding the movement that's happening right now. So just educate yourself and look at both sides equally. So in the next videos, we've got some really awesome stuff planned for you. I'm going to talk about how to buy and sell Bitcoins, um, tutorials for the software and the tools that are built around the Bitcoin network and ecosystem, how to mine for Bitcoins, how to trade Bitcoins online, how to accept Bitcoins for your business, and much, much more. Um, so please make sure to click here to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't miss out on any of these upcoming videos. And in the meantime, you can go ahead and click right here to watch the next video, which is all about Bitcoin wallets. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it up, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment with any questions that you have, share it with your friends, and I look forward to seeing you in the next videos. Take care.